everyone, thank you for joining me here at The Homegrown Artist. My name is Barbara and today we're going to be creating a quick and easy art journal spread. Thank you for watching and please enjoy. So before we get into the art journal layout, I just wanted to mention that I am starting over completely in all of my mixed media supplies. I ended up having to sell a lot of them, or pretty much all of them, so that I could um, have the funds to get to Taiwan and stay there for a while. So I started off with distress inks and then I got um, some stamps. I went to Michael's on Mother's Day or the day before Mother's Day and uh, they had a really good sale so you could get the buy one get one free four sets of the distress ink minis and then buy one get one free of these stamps. So I'm starting off slowly but I got enough to make a few different art journal spreads. Um, and these stamps are really cool even though they're clear stamps. They do come with the um, with a stencil. So for each stamp set, I also got a stencil, which is really awesome because with those two combinations, stamps and stencils, you can make a huge variety of backgrounds and focal points and uh, it's just really awesome. So what I'm gonna do is speed up a lot of the videos, slow down things that I need to slow down. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I start off just by breaking in the new Dilutions journal, just trying to get a kind of flat page and I just pick a random page. And then I start stamping the mini distress inks on the Ranger craft mat. Um, I'm using uh, Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon, and Chipped Sapphire for the background of this page. And um, I just stamp them randomly and then I spray them with a Fine Mister bottle. And I also spray the journal page just so instead of it just stamping on the page, it kind of blends just a little bit more and I don't have to dilute the colors as much if that makes sense. And then I kind of just make sure everything's blended and then I try it with my hair dryer because I no longer have the Ranger um, Heat It Craft Tool. And then after it's dried, I go back in and kind of just put add some texture with what's left over on the craft mat just by dipping it in. I do that twice, one with bigger puddles that's left there and then the final time I do the smaller puddles and then I clean up so I don't make a huge mess. And then I use the Canson XL Mixed Media Paper just to have some paper behind um, the spread so that if, when I'm blending these inks on top, which is what I'm doing now, any ink that gets spills over the page will be put on the mixed media paper. And I could probably use that in the future to stamp images or um, just to have some color on a page already. Uh, so I'm starting off with the lightest color, which is Cracked Pistachio, um, just filling in any gaps. And then I move on to the second lightest color, which is Mermaid Lagoon. And with the darker colors, I try to stay kind of more on the outside of the page because I want the middle of the page just to be a little bit lighter for now. Um, but I do go in a little bit with the Mermaid Lagoon in the center where I think it needs more of that color. And I just keep blending the colors out just as I see fit. The thing with mixed media is it kind of doesn't matter. It's just fun. You don't really have to think too much. Um, so then I use the Cracked Pistachio and I keep that specifically on the outside of the page. I do not blend it in the center or anything. Um, and a lot of that is what's going to be the excess that's on the mixed media uh, paper in the back. Um, but I kind of make a frame around the whole page with that darker color because it's more of like a purpley dark blue than a greenish blue. So it kind of stands out a little bit, but it also darkens uh, on the outside of the page. And I, for the corners of the page, I make sure I bring that color in just a little bit more. And then I switch over to black soot um, and I just do the edges. I don't bring it in at all. I just kind of like do the very borders of the page. Um, just so that again creates like a border for the page kind of makes everything else stand out so now to add more texture to the page we are going to be using these stencils that came along with these stamp sets so I'm pulling them out from the package and the first one I pull out is the small bubble stencil it's probably my favorite out of all of them and then there's the big bubble stencil um, all of these are uh, dilution stencils that came with the stamps this is a cherry stencil and then we have a leaf stencil. So those are the stencils that I'm going to use to add and build texture on the background. So I start off doing like the ghosting technique where you kind of spray water, flip the stencil over and the, any water you put on the page, you let it sit for a minute and then pick it up and it lifts some of the ink. So it adds a little bit of texture in the background and you can get this as intense as you want. But this time I didn't spray so much water so it's not super intense but you can still see that it's there. I'm just trying to add with each layer a little bit of subtle um, texture. So then I'm going in with my lightest color. Like I said, I try to use the lightest colors first and going through the large bubble stencil. And because this is the lightest color, that's why I don't mind going through the larger bubbles through the stencil um, because the lightest color doesn't show up as much. 
but it still adds that subtle texture in the background. And that's what it looks like now. And you can stop anywhere you want and you can keep adding texture anywhere you want. And you can add raised texture, but right now all I have are the delusions, so that's what I'm using here. Um, so I'm doing the Mermaid Lagoon through the leaf texture because I will have um, flowers on there later. So I wanted to add a few leaves on the page as well. But I'm not adding too much of that, just enough to ha where you can see it on the page. Kind of like three on each side. And then I'm taking the Chip Sapphire, which is kind of the outlier color between these three colors. It's kind of more purpley and a little darker. So that's why I'm using it in the small bubble stencil. And I'm doing it more in smaller sections, but more of them throughout the page because I want that color to kind of stand out. And you can see that it does kind of make it stand out throughout the page and adds a lot of, it looks like I've added a lot of more color when I didn't, and it makes everything else kind of pop out more. So then I'm taking these two flowers from the Dilusions Clear Stamp Set, and I'm gonna stamp those along um, the page, just wherever, I don't even think about it, I just kind of just stamp them. Um, I'm using the Tim Holtz acrylic block to stamp them, and I'm using the Dilusions ink to stamp them because I'm gonna color them in later. And I don't have any archival ink right now that's on its way in the mail. But I'm just stamping uh, like three of these each. Um, and then I'm going to color them in later. And I'm stamping them all, them all with the uh, Mermaid Lagoon. So then I'm taking some of the ink from the Distress Ink Minis. I'm taking the Mermaid Lagoon again and the Tim Holtz water brush and kind of just coloring in the flowers. That's the great thing about Distress Inks. You can do so much, so many layering things and coloring with them and everything. You can use them in so many ways. That's why it's the first thing that I bought because they're just so versatile. Um, so I'm coloring the big flowers with the Mermaid Lagoon and then I switch over to the Chip Sapphire for the smaller flowers. And then I go with the, um, no, not Chip Sapphire, the Crack Pistachio. And then I take the Chip Sapphire and go into the center of the flower. So now I'm just showing you the stamp sets that I use to get the focal images that I'm going to be putting on my art journal spread. And I use three of Dilusion's stamp sets. Uh, and this quote says, don't give me attitude, I already have it, which is pretty cute. Um, and I stamp those out with the uh, Versafine Onyx Black Ink with the Fiskars stamp press thing. Um, and I have them all already fussy cut out. I stamped them on the mixed media paper that we used in the beginning, the Canson XL mixed media paper. And because, um, we have like a blue background, I kind of wanted the colors to pop out. So I'm using like contrasting colors and I'm doing the same method to get the color on the focal images that I did in the background. And the main reason I'm doing this is because the paper that I use is kind of thin. And if I blend across what I already fussy cut out, it may tear it a little bit and then this is also quicker and I can get kind of like cool blends and texture on the focal images as well and then later if I want to add any emphasis with the other inks I can do that and I do this process twice just to get the colors a little bit more intense and anywhere that there wasn't color on the first pass I uh, made sure there was some color on the second pass and then I dry them all out and this is what they look like. And like I said, you can add more color on the edges if you wanted to, to kind of make them pop out a little bit more. But I thought these popped out just enough for um, the background. So I ended up not doing that. Um, so now I'm just kind of like placing them where I want them to be. And then they need somewhere to stand. They can't just look like they're floating in air. So I give them some little washi tape areas to stand on. I got this washi tape at Michael's too on Mother's Day. It was a... Uh, 40% off all Recollections washi tape. They have, the, they have some really nice washi tape, which is really cool. And then I use the Elmer's Craft Bond glue to glue all the images down. Um, the reason I'm using this glue is because it's the only glue I have, but also um, I would use it anyway on this page just because I am using Dilutions and I are Distress inks, and I don't have the stuff that um, makes it waterproof. So by using the dry glue, it just kind of helps it to where I don't smear anything in the background or the color on the main images. Uh, because if you used like a gel medium or something like that, it would smear your background images. Uh, so I'm just gluing them down where I think they need to be. And I make sure when I use this glue that I kind of press everything down so that the glue is everywhere and that it's not gonna move later. 
So I do that for all of the images. And just clean up the craft mat a little bit. Push down everything again, make sure it's firmly put down there. And then I decide that because the washi tape's down at the bottom, it needs to be in other places. It's kind of like a, a rule in mixed media. If you have something in one place, you want to kind of add it in a few other places just so it doesn't stand out too much. Um, so I just add them in random places. And then I take this pencil and I start adding stems for the flowers so they also don't look like they're floating. Um, and this is the uh, Stabilo All pencil, which is an amazing pencil because you can do so much with this thing. Um, it's water soluble, but it writes on everything. So you can write on windows, you can write over on top of uh, gel medium, on top of acrylic paints, all that stuff. So I'm using it to go around the images that I uh, glued on there because right now they just kind of look like they're floating and this kind of grounds them and makes them become part of the page. Another way that you could make an image become part of the page is to kind of add like any part of your background images, add a little bit of that to your main images and they just kind of blend in a little bit. Uh, so now I'm taking the Tim Holtz water brush and um, because the Stabilo All Pencil is water soluble, I'm kind of blending that out to create more of a shadow around all of the images that I added to the page. And then once I do the stem for the flower, I, I realize that I kind of want the flowers to stand out and become more of the focal image than in the background. So I use a Stabilo All Pencil around all of the flowers as well. and then I activate it, all of that ink with water. Um, the reason I'm activating all of it with water is because, I mean, you can leave it the way it is, just black pencil marks, but I found that one, if you leave Stabilo All Pencil in an art journal page, sometimes when your pages are closed, it can smear on the other page um, because it is, I don't even know what it's made out of, but it's just that texture, kind of like chalk a little bit, like oily chalk and it kind of smears and also when you activate it with water it becomes more deep and intense which is what I kind of wanted because it does the black kind of brings it forward a little bit more so I do activate everywhere I put the Stabilo all pencil I activate with water and you can see how it just kind of makes it pop a little bit more so then I take the Uniposca pen and white this is just an acrylic paint pen and I add like highlights on the eyes little doodles on the flowers and um, I go around the quote just to make it stand out a little bit more and around the uh, washi tape just to make that kind of blend into the background a little bit more as well and then I try to get splatters with the um, uni Posca paint pen because I don't have any acrylics other than that one so um, that didn't work. It just gave me a really tiny splatter, so I figured I would try something else later. Um, so I continue just putting highlights on the page with the Uniposca pen around the flowers, again, just to make them more part of the foreground than the background, make them stand out a little bit more. And then I remember that you can shake the Posca pen to get splatter, so that's what I do here. It's a lot messier, but it gives you the results. And then I take the Stabilo All Pencil, wet that, and put splatters on the background. So that is it for this art journal page. It was super quick and super easy to do. I do hope that you enjoy the video. And if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.